Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Helen Chen. I'm the head of external and alumni relations at HKUST Business School. Thank you very much for joining us today to encourage everyone at the HKUST community to make the informed choices toward their healthy and fulfilling life. We have launched the wellness series this year. This is the third iteration uh, workshop series, and we are excited to have invited our MBA alumna, Judy Xu and her team to share with us about sleep management and resilience building. If you have any technical problems during the event, please approach our supporting team members who all have HKUST prefix and, uh, before their name. You're also welcome to ask questions at the Q&A session starting at around 1.40 p.m. It is my great pleasure to introduce our speaker and moderator today, Judy. Judy is from our MBA class of 2006. She is the CEO, executive life coach and holistic health coach at Balance Health. With the belief that no single system of medicine has the answers to every medical problem, her clinic offers alternatives to the conventional, conventional health treatments. She also found that balance potential, a workplace wellness company providing people-centric solutions to business challenges through wellness, leadership, and engagement programs. Judy has a unique transformation from marketing and sales professional to a wellness expert and an entrepreneur. It is her life vision to support people to achieve health and wellness in all aspects. She is also keen to promote the concept of benefits of Chinese medicine to the Western world. Without further ado, let me pass the floor to Judy and her team. Don't forget to stay until the end for the lucky draw and don't fall asleep. Thank you. Judy, yours. Thank you, Helen, for your very nice and kind uh, introduction. Um, I'm Judy Xu, um, together with our team, um, Clara Chan and Catherine Ament, um, that we're really honored um, and very grateful for this opportunity to share some insights around sleep uh, and uh, resilience. Uh, so probably first, please allow us to just introduce ourselves uh, a little bit. Uh, and uh, maybe first I would like to talk quickly about uh, um, Balance House. So uh, let me just share the screen. So as Hannah already mentioned that our vision at Balance is really to support people in their journey toward health, balance and personal transformation. Um, and we have a very unique um, approach so that at Balance, we use a very holistic and integrative approach. So for example, we integrate Chinese medicine, energy medicine, and my body medicine to really look at what's the root cause of the imbalance and then support people to get back to harmony and balance and health in a very natural approach. And what we do best is uh, like warm health, fertility, stress management and sleep, um, pain management, the physical, emotional pain, and also personal development and transformation. So that is uh, about uh, uh, Balance House. Um, and for ourselves, that has Hannah already introduced that um, I'm an MBA alumni uh, from 2006. And uh, maybe a little bit about my um, journey that after MBA, I did a few years of a typical MBA type of job, but then I quit and I tried to find my uh, Northern Lights. Uh, and today I'm very happy and grateful that I do find uh, my path and my Northern Lights. Uh, and uh, I'm not only running a business which is aligned with my belief, but also myself is a uh, uh, executive coach and life coach uh, and my work is a lot about to really support people to realize their highest potential to connect with their purpose um, to connect with their inner power and then to optimize the mind and optimize the body and really to achieve the peak performance 
without stress, but with ease and grace. So that's a bit uh, about me and my work, and uh, I'm very grateful to be able to do this. And together with me today, we also have uh, Clara Chang. So Dr. Clara Chang is a registered Chinese medicine doctor. She has a master in acupuncture and PhD in um, Chinese medicine with HKU. So prior to becoming a Chinese medicine doctor, Clara actually has been working for the corporate for close to 30 years. And her last role is actually heading the global quality assurance uh, and Asian sourcing for the big company Nike. So she truly understands the stressful corporate life um, that many of you have. Um, and clinically that a lot of clients were raving about uh, Clara's very effective pain management treatment or uh, cro treating chronic disease. Um, but for Clara, especially in the recent years, the thing made her feel most fulfilled um, is around to supporting the couples who have um, fertility challenges to conceive babies. Nothing brings us a bigger smile when we see those uh, <laughs> newborn babies coming to, to the clinic uh, through our whole support along the journey. And we also have uh, Catherine Hermit coming joining us today. Uh, she is a registered kinesiology practitioner, and she has been practicing energy medicine for around 10 years. Um, she's also a holistic health coach, and recently she incorporates uh, therapeutic yoga into her um, practice um, as well. And Catherine also comes with around 20 years uh, working experience in the corporate, in the big finance uh, industries, as uh, heading a lot of global projects. And she has worked in France, India, um, and Hong Kong. So that's naturally, um, today she supports a lot of uh, very stressful professionals to do stress management, insomnia, anxiety, depression, and help them to get back uh, to, to balance. Um, so that's about the team for today um, and our intention and for this session, we probably is um, we are going to spend around 30 minutes. We want to keep it uh, short and concise, um, but really to share with you uh, the key frameworks, how to think about sleep, the key knowledge, and then we'll give you um, some very practical tools so you can take back home uh, to practice on your own and to improve uh, your sleep. Um, so let me share my screen again. And um, first, I would like to share our first framework. Give me a moment. Let me share the screen. So the first framework that we would like to share is really around the, the holistic approach toward health. So when we look at sleep, when we look at any aspect that we would like to improve, being health, treating disease, or just being at peak performance, we would like to look at all these four elements, our body, our mind, our energy, and our spirit. So when we look at all these four elements together and use a very integrated approach, then we have a very compound effect to make the whole effect even better. And then related with sleep, sleep is super important because it will impact our body and it will impact our mind, it can make our mind to be more focused, have better memory and think more clarity. It also impacts our energy and it gives us more grounded spirit as well. So super important for sleep. And if we zoom in into the body level, and if we zoom in into the body level, then again, we also need to use a very holistic way to look at the body. And those are key elements we need to take into consideration is stress, sleep, um, digestion and diet and food, exercise, hormonal balance, toxicity, uh, genetics, all these elements we need to take into consideration. When we sleep well, all the other elements were enhanced. But at the same time, when we do not sleep well, and sleep is something different than diet or exercise, you can just do. When you don't sleep well, you cannot just want to sleep well at will. 
So how to improve sleep? Apart from sleep itself, we also need to look into the other elements like food and digestion, exercise, uh, hormone balance and toxicity and all that uh, we will elaborate more uh, later. So now we know that sleep is so important. But then what is good sleep uh, and what is sleep disorder? So Dr. Clara Chung, would you yeah, like us to know a bit more? Yeah, probably take, a lot of people will think that um, eight hours sleep is good, right? But actually it's very individualized. And then like everybody's demand on sleep is can be quite different. And uh, it all depends on their own circadian rhythm, like it's, which is the, the rest and wake rhythm that they, they are going through. Um, in, if you go back to research, like actually um, from adults that age around like 26 to 64, the um, sleep foundations in the in US is actually thought that any time between like any, any, the range is around like six hours sleep to 10 hours sleep is all acceptable, depends on your personal need. So what what is a good sleep? The sleep is like probably is it all go back to the quality of sleep and also like whether you wake up with a enough energy to go through the day. And let, let's say what is enough energy is like you, you have energies to go through the whole day's activities without falling asleep, without feeling tired, then you probably has already have a good sleep. So don't take it so adamant on like, oh, eight hours is a must. But then like, rather, I think that is like more important to go, to go for like a quality of sleep. And then like what most of the people complain on two things, like most of the people complain on two things. It's like, how, how can I, um, fall, I don't fall asleep. Well, like it takes me two hours to fall asleep or I wake up constantly during the night and I cannot fall back asleep. So this, those two are most commonly, so most commonly we heard during our clinical practices. So, so in, from a TCM point of view, they act of different patterns of insomnia. So like for people that can fall asleep, like a very high percentage of them is actually having the excessive pattern. And the excessive pattern is actually caused by the excessive of heat or like, uh, which is, can be caused by the yin deficiency, which can be caused by um, uh, a tea stagnations or liver tea stagnations, or actually it can um, be some, some um, path pathogens in the body that cannot be clear, like a blood clot of or like um, excessive flame in the body, all can cause heat, and then the heat will make you too active to fall asleep. And the other, the other patterns are actually you wake up at night. Normally, it's also due to like you have a deficiency syndromes. So like the deficiency syndromes is also related to um, a lower performance of the heart system or the spleen system. Occasionally, it will involve the the liver and the gallbladder system too. Um, another very, very common um, symptoms that we saw or, or patterns that we saw in a modern city life is that um, we found that there's, there's a disharmony between the heart system and the kidney system, which make it um, very disturbed and then you cannot calm yourself down and, and then like you don't have, can, has a limitation of going into deep sleep. We will talk a little bit more about that when we give tips to improve your sleep. But um, basically, we are looking at different patterns and then like um, there's different reasons for that behind the scene. So in order to improve the sleep, you have to improve the pathogens, uh, eliminate the pathogens or improve your weakened um, visceral system. That probably is how we approach it. Thank you, Clara. Uh, so we have different reasons leading to um, uh, poor quality of sleep. Um, so we need to understand the reason and then improve according, accordingly, according to Chinese medicine's uh, diagnosis. But at the same time that there's also things which we can do, which is commonly, which across uh, everybody. So now we are going to share the first thing uh, is around the circadian rhythm. So when we talk about sleep, um, the first thing is that how we can allow our body to be aligned with the, the circadian rhythm. So in a, in a Western concept, it says is that when we wake up and then that our cortisol begin to, to produce. So it gets us move and do things all through the day. And then that toward the end of the night, uh, the day, and then the cortisol stop, and then that our melatonin begin to produce. And melatonin is really the most important 
hormone that you need to have. If you don't have enough melatonin, if your daily activity does not support you to produce enough melatonin, then that you won't be able to have good quality sleep. So what are the things we can do to align ourselves to the nature, to the circadian rhythm, so that we will have enough cortisol in the day and enough melatonin uh, at night? So here's uh, a few suggestions that uh, when you wake up, then probably the first thing you can do is to, to go to somewhere with natural light to tell your body, hey, I've wake up. Uh, and, and then you can begin to produce um, cortisol uh, and to, to get ready for the day. And during the day, uh, we stay indoor a lot. But if you can get outdoor and get some sun exposure, will also definitely um, help a lot. Uh, and we also all know that exercise is a very important, play a very important role for overall health, but also it's a key element um, for our sleep. But if you can do exercise before two o'clock, it will be better uh, for, your uh, for your sleep. Similar as if you do take uh, coffee intakes, uh, then before two o'clock uh, will be best and try to avoid after two o'clock. And then close to night, we have sunset. And then we also need to think about in the modern world, we need to have digital sunset. What does that mean is that after sunset, let's try to lower the usage of screen time, at least one hour to two hours before you go to bed, there's no screen time. And also let's try to lower the exposure to the blue light uh, when after the, the sunset, um, especially close to sleep, you can dim your light so there's not too much blue light because blue light is telling your body that, oh, stop produ producing melatonin, uh, which is not what you want. Uh, and also that when you really sleep, you want to make sure that your room is dark, there's no like Wi-Fi signals, no EMS in the bedroom so that you can really have a very uh, good quality sleep. Um, so these are more from the Western perspective, uh, and I know from a Chinese medicine perspective, we have another set of the circadian rhythm, uh, and Dr. Clara, can you share a bit more on that? So like, um, actually it's quite similar, but then uh, we are more specific on each movement, like the, um, in, from a TCM perspective, like um, the connection of human and nature is, is is almost the key of our core body of knowledge. So basically we study a lot about biological rhythm. So like the most being studied is like including the circadian rhythm, um, the lunar rhythm, which is like a, the moon rise and fall type of rhythm and also the seasonal rhythm. And um, from, from the um, circadian rhythm point of view in a day of 24 hours, um, our knowledge is that our T or, which is the vital energy of the body moves through different organ system in a two hours interval. Um, from, from 1 a.m. to 3 a.m., which is a very critical time, as this, this is time that when the vital energy travels to the liver system, we always ask people to go to bed earlier, say between like 11 to 12. And, but the, the key thing is that you, we want you to be in deep sleep or at least in totally rest by the by one o'clock. The reason is that when the energies or the T travels to the certain organs, the organ actually can perform at its peak, which is like they have the most energies that they can perform their functions. And liver is a very key um, organ system in our body, which is like it detox, it um, clean the blood um, and have performed a lot of crucial life functions. And uh, at this, during this moment, we wanted to do the, the job that it need to do instead of like we are concentrating on partying outside, wasting our energy and letting and compromising uh, the liver functions. And from 3 a.m. to 3 p.m. per se is like the time that which is the tea circulates through the, um, the organs that assimilate, digest and eliminate food in our body. So that's why like um, seven from five to seven a.m. like where, when the tea is going to the large intestine is actually a perfect timing for you to clear your bowel and when you move forward to 7 a.m. to 9 a.m. is the best time for like food intake because it's like the energy is with the stomach so it's give you a good digestion for but for the for the same things it's like after 3 p.m. Um, and the further you go down at night then probably is like it's not a very good idea for you to take late lunch if you are or late dinner or supper if you are actually not have a very good digestive system. So 
what I'm what we are trying to say is that if you observe um, how the energy flow of during the day, probably it will help you to um, perform better, um, make use of the body energy better, and actually don't compromise your body energies when you and don't do things that you should not be doing during a certain period of time. Oh, thank you, Clara. So let's all do things aligned in nature, aligned <laughs> energy, and not against it. And next, I would like to invite Catherine to talk a bit more around the whole physiology and sleep. Yeah, thank you, Judy. But there was also a lot of uh, recent uh, study and research mm. around uh, gut and hormones mm -hmm. uh, that are secreted inside this area. And in fact, what they discovered is uh, very interesting. In fact, we have more than one brain in our body, right? The gut being the second mm -hmm. brain and the most more, uh, very important organ. Um, so they discovered a lot of neurons and glial cells, but also what they discovered, it was um, a lot of bacteria, okay? Uh, and we can call it my gut microbiota. And in fact, you, I don't know if you know, but you have more than three trillions of mm -hmm. these uh, bacteria in your gut, mm -hmm. right? So they're populating. <laughs> Very heavy. <laughs> yes. This is about two and a half to three kilo of mm -hmm. uh, dry mass. Mm -hmm. Okay, and these these little uh, tritrium friends, mm -hmm. as I um, call them, <laughs> they are doing a lot of activities and a byproduct of their activities is serotonin. And what serotonin does is, um, uh, sorry, uh, yes, what serotonin. What serotonin does is, is this, this is the happy hormone uh, that helps to stabilize our mood. Mm. But also what serotonin does is it's a precursor of melatonin. And mm. melatonin, as we have seen with you, Judy, is a very, very important uh, hormone for sleep, mm -hmm. all right? And also these bacteria produce GABA. And mm. GABA also is very important uh, to calm down, to help you to calm down and to inhibit your stress. So you understand that uh, if these uh, tritrillion bacteria are not very happy, so if they are in dysbiosis, then you will probably have insomnia, right? So what to do? What, what, can, what can you do to make these, uh, these uh, bacteria happy? Well, the answer is feed them properly, right? So you have to feed them unprocessed food, the food this is closer to the nature as possible. You have to feed them fiber food uh, and, a lot of diversity of fruits and vegetables. Mm. I like to call it the, the rainbow colors mm. of fruits and vegetables. Mm. Uh, preferably raw but or slightly cooked because mm -hmm. you will cook the bacteria that are on them. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you can use also fermented food uh, like kimchi, uh, kefir, yogurt. Uh, all of that are rich in probiotic and are very helpful supplementing yogurts with what they need. Okay, another topic that is around gut and um, sleep is also toxicity. Okay, as Clara mentioned, uh, toxicity uh, can impair our sleep function. Okay, and detoxification happens at night. Mm. So it's like a, a little burst vicious cycle there. Insomnia can be uh, the symptom of toxicity. And mm. if you are toxic, then you, you will not be able to sleep as well, mm. all right? Uh, insomnia can be created by toxicity in heavy metal, mm. like copper, mm. and it can be also uh, due to, to uh, mold in a flat, and mm. in Hong Kong, the humidity is quite uh, frequent, I would say. So if, if you wake up around 2 a.m., uh, there is a chance that your body is, have a, has a toxic overload, so you will probably need uh, to focus on toxicity. Um, so get a program, get a detox program, um, and, uh, and eliminate some uh, toxic uh, components from your environment would be necessary. Mm. Thank you, uh, Catherine. Yeah. yeah, seem to live align with the nature and eat align with nature. It's a core theme uh, today here. <laughs> uh, and uh, Clara, do you have anything to add from a Chinese medicine perspective? Well, so basically, um, I think the we 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 thought that like the digestive system is very important, like um, on, on the whole things, which is like um, 
just re echoing what um, Catherine is saying, if you go back to the patterns that we are referring to earlier, um, apart from the heart system, which is normally the, the most affected uh, system when we have insomnia, or the cause of the weakening heart is the, the mo most important um, reason. All the other organ involved is related to digestive system. Like we are talking about spleen system, we are talking about liver system, or gallbladder system. They are all like that our digestive system. And plus, if or if any indigestion is happening, basically like reflux um, or like you you are not like you have a, a heartburn during night during the night, it all affects the. Um, your sleeping quality. Mm -hmm. So I thought that like from our point of view, some of our approach that to treat insomnia is also like appealing to the digestive system to make mm -hmm. sure that um, it's intact before we go on to further treatment. So this is like the base of like how we mm -hmm. treat it. Okay, yeah, thank you, uh, Dr. Clara. So I guess if we all improve our digestion, the food, um, I guess that uh, we can all improve our sleep also um, as some uh, degree. So we talked about uh, the whole physiology part of sleep, and we probably want to talk a bit more on the emotional side of it. Uh, and here I want to introduce another framework, um, which I use a lot in, in, in the coaching, it's called level of uh, transformation. So if we look at on the top is the goal, if our goal today is to sleep well, and to build more resilience. So to achieve that, then we need to have all the knowledge as we just shared the physiology, the circadian and all that, that we build up with strategy and skill in order to achieve that. And then there's uh, also we need to look more deeper layers. So the next layer is about motivation. So we talk about how important sleep is. Mm -hmm. So I would like to ask the audience here is how important is sleep for you? If you can really have good quality sleep, how your life will be different. And then giving the contribution that sleep makes to your life, how much commitment you have to take actions, to take efforts, to improve your sleep. So this is the level of motivation. And then if we go one level deeper, it's around our thoughts and feelings. So I know research has, uh, said that uh, on average, every human being has around 50 to 70,000 of thoughts. And many of them are repetitive and many of them are uh, <clears throat> negative. So just imagine we have all these negative, repetitive thoughts around in our minds. Uh, and these stressful thoughts will lead to uh, adrenal line peak and cortisol peak then that will lead to bad sleep at night. So in order to improve sleep, we also need to be very mindful of our, of our thoughts and to be aware of those negative thinking patterns which we have. And then that to shift that. So the less of negative thoughts and negative thinking patterns, then the better our mind will be and then the less, uh, the more resilient we will be and the, the better sleep we will have. And uh, related with thought is also the emotional part. I know, Catherine, you deal a lot with people's emotion. Would you like to share uh, a bit more? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, they don't look happy. <laughs> so in the word emotions, I would like to point out uh, that there is E and emotions. So it is not static, right? right? And it's mm -hmm. self-explanatory. Um, you have to move what you feel, mm. right? You have to process it. You have to assimilate it. Mm. And if you don't do it during the day, there is a big chance that you will do it during the night when your <laughs> cortex and your other thinking functions are not switched on. Yeah. So, <laughs> so you better, you know, deal with it during the day. And here in Hong Kong, uh, I see a lot of people actually in my practice that are the mastering the, the, the suppression mm. okay I don't know if to, that's probably cultural or you you have to do it right a bit more mm. in your professional world because you can't express the full range of emotions so uh, you you have to you have to do something mm. because if you don't don't act on it 
right? You can generate more anxiety, more anger, more depression, and on the body side, effect of it. You can be low, uh, more fatigue, low energy, and, and your body start to break from inside out. Mm. Um, so don't, don't wait. My advice here is don't wait. You have to break this vicious cycle. If you cannot get it under control after three months, okay, you can self-diagnose diagnose yourself as a chronic uh, insomniac. Okay, and there's plenty of solution for you to get back into balance in the natural way, like with kinesiology or TCM or the methods proposed by Balance Health. So, so don't don't wait. Mm -hmm. um, um, yeah. So maybe, yeah, there, and there is deeper reason also uh, for emotion. So maybe Judy, you can let us know a bit more on that. Mm. Thank you, Catherine. Yeah, indeed, that's when we have those deep emotions or recurrent if emotions, they quite often come into a deeper level of conflict. So if we go back to our framework, then after certain feelings, the next level we look at is really those our identities, our core values, and the way of our being. So when those things are not aligned, when we're in a job which is aligned with our purpose, when we are in a relationship which is not honor who we are, when we are working environment which does not align with our values, and then those are the things which trigger all those long lasting suffering of emotions. And clinically, we also see that this quite often, if you don't deal with it, it will become the onset of a chronic insomnia. Um, people coming to us with five, 10 years uh, insomnia mm -hmm. experience. And the beginning of it is quite often due to that misalignment at a very core level. Um, mm -hmm. So it's something we do need to look at it if that is the reason uh, for, for sleep. Okay, um, so that's it or the framework side. Uh, and then next, we would like to introduce a bit more on um, uh, practical side. So um, Catherine, would you like to share with us the sleep kit you put together for us? <laughs> yes, just uh, probably quickly few elements of it. Mm -hmm. So first of all, I would say nutrition is the first medicine. I, I mean, you have to fix that, that one first. And then if uh, need be, uh, you can take, um, you can look at the magnesium, uh, melatonin, GABA, l form of supplementation. Um, I just say that magnesium is a very common deficiency. 30% of us are magnesium deficient. If you want to look at herbs, ashwagandha is very, very good herbs, uh, adaptogenic herbs from India mm -hmm. and address uh, the cortisol and the adrenals mm -hmm. type of stress. You can also use essential oils um, and back flour for your, you know, uh, remedies as well. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, thank you, um, Catherine. So today, given the time, we probably would like to leave more time uh, for Q&A, so we're not going into very detail. So if you would like to have the slide, we're happy to share, then just type your email in, in the chat, uh, and then we will send the, the slides to you. And I know that Catherine, you also prepared some uh, very simple practice uh, for emotional balance. Uh, can you share with us? Yeah, so this is to pro process your emotions. <laughs> 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 so the first one that you can do, it's very easy. If you can put your hand on the top of your uh, forehead, right, pressing gently here. Actually, this, the two points here on, on the top of the eyeballs are the one to reach. Or you can uh, gently put your hands, it's also doing the same effect. And you think about your emotions and you let go. So you can breathe and, and process this emotion like that. It brings flu uh, blood flow into your cortex also. Mm. So that helps to uh, mm. rationalize mm. your thoughts. There is uh, these, these points here for anxiety. So mm. if you're more fearful, if there is something more threatening to you, mm. uh, so you could press on these points, which are just below the collarbone. And there is another series of interesting points. Uh, these ones are uh, what I call themselves hard points. So mm. you just do this as a cross. Mm. Uh, you keep your hands on the collarbones and this uh, point here in the middle. And you also breathe, think about your emotions and let it go. 
right? And this one is for like, it's nothing logical about your emotion. You can't rationalize it. So maybe it's coming from your belief system. Maybe it's coming from, you know, framework that you learned during your childhood. So there's nothing, no logic to it. So you can use these points. Yeah, thank you, Kestri. I'm going to practice that a lot more. Um, and I know that uh, Clara also pre uh, prepared some uh, very practical practice for us. And Clara, would you like to share with us? Yeah. So one of the, um, we talk about one of the patterns that we see in clinical practice or the most common patterns is like the um, disharmony between the heart system and also the kidney system. So what we're trying to do here is a very simple exercise that you can do before you go to bed, which is like just using the, the center of your palm to rub the center of your feet. Um, the pictures over there should be give you a very clear indicator as how to do it already. Um, the force I want you to do is like with moderate force so with the target of like warming up the feet. You know, so that when, um, so normally people will ask how many times I should do, it's like um, probably like 99 times each side. The number is not, has, don't have any magic. It's just like, it will give you a consistency that you're practicing. And also when you do it, you can be more mindful when you count the number. So, um, so basically um, what all this serve is to calm the body. And also like, it will also like, uh, we connect the heart system and the kidney system, which makes you, have a deeper sleep and have a better quality of sleep overall. So it worked it work well, so that especially for people that actually being affected by pharmacological reasons, like they're taking chemo or they're taking certain medicines that will affect the sleep, this is particularly effective. And another thing that's more general that we're going to share um, next is like a uh, simple tea to promote a better sleeping quality. We talk about emotions. And emotions deeply related to um, our liver systems functioning. And the two patterns of, uh, related to it is like, which will cause insomnia. One is, is like a liver T stagnation. The other thing is like the liver blood deficiency. So in the daytime, if you take some foro tea, it can prevent the liver T stagnation. Um, for, uh, we normally, would, why we use flowers? Because like flower is like, opening up is like um like spreading it out right so like any stagnations can go <laughs> so um um chinese medicine is like that it's very patent it's very like life related or nature related so um the flower we suggest is normally rose is actually very good um another thing another um red color flower is rose cell is also very good um if you um have the chinese taste then at maybe you you would also like the osmanthus it is also like a very tasty um and smell good type of um floral flower that you can make into tea and at the night time we want you to take fruit tea um because we want to nourish the blood fruit and root are those where the energy is and then it can it's the most nourishing part of a plant so for fruit, like the most recommended are, the, are those in red colors, like so like any days that is like uh, red days, black days, or uh, blue color days, all is good as long as it's dark colors. Uh, so as like goji berries, which is also very blood enhancing. Uh, and also the dry nongan. The dry nongan is extremely calming, has an extremely calming effect. Um, the only drawback on that is like all of this is quite sweet. So <laughs> you have to mind the quantity that you put into and definitely not, not add the sugars. This is like sweetened enough. And it will also help, not just help you to um, calm yourself down, but also like enriching your blood in the long run. So yeah, thank two you. tips, yeah. <laughs> thank you, Clara. So now we have some good reason to bring the sweetness uh, into our diet, but just to be, uh, keep a good balance. Yeah. And then next, uh, as we shared before, that um, um, to be mindfulness and also it's a very good way for us to manage stress uh, and also to for, for better sleep. So that we would like to share a two minute heart coherence mindfulness practice. So it's just for you to slow down your breathing and to connect to your heart and then bring into your mind a positive emotion uh, and just for two minutes. So if you would like to follow, uh, then you can follow us. You can just, if you have some time, place safe, you can just have put your feet down on the ground. And you can close your eyes if you like, or you can just 
softly gaze your eyes at certain objects and begin to do a few slow and deep breathing. Breathing and out. Slow and deep. And begin to connect back to your body. Just to feel how you feel. And letting go of all the busyness of the day. And if you feel any tensions, just breathe into that spot of tension. And when you breathe out, let the tension go. One more time. And out. And now you can bring your awareness to your heart. And just imagine that you are breathing in and out through your heart. If you feel comfortable, you can put your hand on top of your chest. Just focus on your heart. Slow and deep breathing. You can breathe in five seconds and out five seconds. In two, three, four, five. Out. Two, three, four, five. One more time. Um. And now we can bring a very positive emotion to your heart. It can be peace and calm, it can be joy can be love and compassion. Just bring that to your heart and feel it. And at the same time, remain slow and deep breathing. And now you can imagine to radiate out this feeling from your heart out to your whole body. Now your whole body feels this emotion of peace, calm, joy, love, compassion. And each of your cells is radiated with this positive emotion. And you can stay here for one more breathing. And whenever you are ready, you can come back, can open your eyes, and come back to connect with the three-dimensional world again. And I would like to thank you, everybody. It's a beautiful practice. Uh, I can feel this energy um, being very peace and calm now, um, even across Zoom. So in this peace and calm moment, I would like you to reflect of all the things we've shared, what you've learned, and what is giving in sleep is so important. What is one action that you would like to take to improve your sleep after the talk? So we put together 12 important things we've covered from food to exercise to eat before seven, sleep before 11. You can just pick one or two or three that you would like to take action on. I would invite you to write down and think about how you can keep yourself accountable. And if you would like us to keep you accountable, you can email your action to, to our clinic. Um, here we have our email. Uh, and then that within a week time, we will check in with you that whether you've done the action that you, you commit, you will do uh, to improve your sleep. <laughs> <laughs> um, and uh, we, here we also have a bit of information of our website, our social media. We share a lot of health information. So if you like, you can um, follow us. Uh, and with that, we are open up to, to Q and A's. Uh, and uh, then, 
after the Q&A, we will do our final lucky draw. So let me look at the... Um, so first question, probably to Clara, mm -hmm. how to do self acupressure for insomnia? Yeah, so like, um, there is a, there's a lot of like things you can do, but then the one that we, um, we just introduced, like rubbing the center, of, you know, your center of feet with the center of hand, um, basically is a, I personally think that is the most effective one. Um, of course, like there's certain acupoints like um, uh, Loi Guan Yu, um, and there's a lot of, uh, and also like uh, the head massage, and there's a lot of other things that we can, um, uh, can use in order to uh, to help us to sleep better. Um, but like, this is like, it's a too long a question. So probably if you really want to have a little bit more tips, you can also email us to me um, through the Balance Health. And then I will, I will just like a couple of tips or like a one page things and get back to you on that. Yeah, thank you, Clara. And then the next question is tips of easy wake up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that is quite off common because actually mm. clinically we see most people actually easy to to fall in sleep but difficult to and then they wake up and difficult to get back to to sleep. So Kathleen, do you have any tips around easy wake up? Well, for me, I don't put any wake up call. <laughs> so I don't have this shock in the morning when I wake up. Mm. Um, but there is there is uh, some um, wake up machine that provides light, so the lights come up, you know, slowly, gradually, yeah. gradually. Uh, and it's better than the you know some of the alarm, mm -hmm. uh, which is you know very aggressive actually. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that's what that's what I do. But if you you wouldn't wake up naturally, I would say if you have your uh, amount of sleep hours that you require, which is in general the eight hours. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And in terms of like, a, a, if you easy wake up middle of, of the night and cannot go back to sleep, then, then probably one suggestion is really that don't force yourself because many mm -hmm. of the time that uh, people who have sleep issues, they actually get a lot of stress of not able to sleep. And sometimes if you just allow, if you wake up middle of the, the night and you tell yourself it is okay, compared to that I have to go back to sleep and just take the stress out and then that do something like a body scan a scan from your head all the way to your toe um, and just to relax your body and if you go back to sleep you go back to sleep mm. and if it's really not it's probably even better to actually get up and do something read some books or things like that uh, and when you're tired then you go back to sleep but yeah, no then, screen yeah <laughs> very right no screen right because like the moment you use blue sc yeah. uh, and screen that your body thinks it's daytime and then yeah. they <laughs> not produce melatonin and do other things. Yeah. But then if you are traveling, like I, I used to travel a lot when I might have the global jobs. And then uh, mm -hmm. I found that the, the easiest things to approach it is like if you wake up at three o'clock and you don't want to go back to sleep due to time changes, you just let it happen. And then you your target is like every day you try to change it for an hour. Yeah. So soon you will be be like sleep till like six. But then like don't force yourself on the first day and get frustrated because anxiety is like definitely one of the cause of your insomnia so don't let it happen and, and the more you think about it just like what Julie said the more difficult that you fall back to your sleep mm -hmm. yeah then another question is about uh, how to keep mouth closed during sleep uh, <laughs> <laughs> i know there's, a, there's those like a uh, mouth tape nowadays are quite popular uh, which you can buy 3M or so Amazon, mm. and that can help. But we probably would recommend check with your GP and to see that whether your your physical body is fit for, for that. Yeah, but yeah. also like why you open your mouth probably is because you have a sleep apnea. So which means that you cannot breathe through your nose properly. So that's another thing you probably would like to check. Um, there's a lot of um, remedy for sleep apnea, but then like, um, yeah, so so just to find out the root cause of why you have to yeah. open your mouth, you know, like mm -hmm. during the sleep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, and then the next question is around um, probably not too much about nowadays uh, for better sleep management, 
for disturbance due to air travel across time zones. Mm. I guess alumni from business school might need to travel a lot, hope the COVID will finish soon, uh, mm. then we have this problem again. Mm. So any recommendations on that? Yeah, I just mentioned like, mm -hmm. let it happen. Yeah, so like, um, and then like, for traveling on the time zone, maybe mentoring can help a little bit because like, yes. it actually help the readjustment of the rebalancing. Yes, so you can take temporarily some melatonin supplement, like mm. one gram uh, when you come back, you know, from your business travel um, and allow when you cross uh, the time zone, mm. allow one day for one time zone that you cross. So for instance, when I travel to mm. France, it will take me seven days to recover from it, mm. right? So I'm also gentle and don't expect me too much Mm. uh to also uh, be regulated because in one or two days you need mm. also time for your body to let it happen but mm. melatonin definitely can help you to shorten that time mm. Mm. Um, for me i myself actually do not have too much sleep uh, um, issue when i cross time zones and one secret i have is that i i really do yoga one to two hours every day and i do certain type of yoga which allows my body to be aligned with the whole universal and sun system very quickly so when i travel to the new place my my system can align with the universal system very quick um, so i probably would suggest you if you do yoga the sun salute uh, sun salute um, set is very good for uh, to helping you to align your body with the new system um, mm. that helps to adjust mm. probably less than seven days if mm. you can add yoga practice mm. into it uh, and also that sun exposure is very important um, as well for travel time, so I normally do is like I drink only green tea on board. Like if you go into internet, there was a lot of people suggesting to. Um, I practically use this method for like 10, 10 12 years and it, it helps me. Like when you do 12 hour time zone, like from Hong Kong, New York to New York. So like I just drink four cups of four to five cups of green tea on board, like during the during the flight and it actually helps. So mm -hmm. like it's something to consider, you know, so like there's a lot of like a lot of tips out there in the internet. Um, the only thing is that you need to find something that that actually suits you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So like, um, it can be done. One thing for sure is like it's just like a total strategy. So like how you help yourself. I also know some kids, younger generations. What they do is they prep for the time change. So they they start changing the time clock before they go on board. So mm -hmm. like, which is which work too, especially for younger generations. I I, I personally haven't tried it. My son do it though. Hmm. And it worked for him. <laughs> yeah. So given the time, probably our last question and uh, that uh, how can I sleep longer? That's a very good question. Uh, I guess a lot of people would like to sleep longer. Uh, would like to address that. Or do, do you need to sleep longer? Yeah, so this is what you're talking about. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But I want to say sleep, I think we, we talked about, you know, strategies uh, all along the talk, which is mm. food, mm -hmm. exercise, and, you know, supplements and points you can mm. try, etc, mm. etc. So that will keep you asleep as long as possible, as long as you need. I would say. Mm -hmm. But I also yeah. think that like there's a physical tiredness and also a mental tiredness. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of people come to me, uh, my clients come to me for insomnia problems. A lot of people just tell me that, oh, I, I have been so tired in my mind. Mm -hmm. And how can I not fall asleep? You know, so like, we we talk about a couple of things like from a Chinese medicine patterns. Remember that in the, in that slide, the reason that you cannot fall asleep normally is due to, you know, like first time when you cannot fall asleep is always due to you have excessive heat or you have um, you know, some pathogens in there. So like if if that is what you're bothering, then you have to clear that. And also like and on the other hand, if you wake up in the middle of the night and then you um, switch make your sleep quality not consistent, then probably you have to address your deficiency. So like you have to check on, you know, like seek from professional help and find out what exactly is the root cause of your, you cannot sleep like long enough in your perspective. I, I presume that when you ask that questions, you are, you don't think you have enough energy to go through the day. Mm -hmm. But if you have enough energy to go through the day, remember that that's not a certain fixed time you have to sleep. As long as like six from six hours to 10 hours is all allowable. It's not mm -hmm. all legitimate. So don't get 
so adamant on like eight hours yeah. or nine hours. It's not the longer the better. It's the most appropriate the better. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and probably in general is that to make your body physically tired, mm. um, but make your mental mind not that tired. <laughs> so that's a, a, a good strategy to yeah, to it's also good, balancing. Yeah, yeah mm. to have good sleep, mm -hmm. and especially closer to to sleep time, that your mind need to slow down. If mm. you have a busy mind, then that your sleep won't be good. And I saw people asking about deep sleep uh, mm. and REM sleep. So that is quite key to manage your mind and do some mindfulness practice before you go to bed. Do some yoga stretching and mindfulness practice before you go to bed. Mm. Like the one we just did, uh, you can just practice it before you go, go to uh, bed. Um, that will be very helpful. Okay, so uh, we, there's some more questions we're not able to, to all go through. Um, so that uh, maybe if there's common interest that uh, we probably can arrange something in, in the future. Uh, and now it is time for us to do lucky draw. And uh, while we are preparing that uh, for those, um, <clears throat> we have three lucky draw uh, winner today. And we are giving out three, um, treatments, uh, one acupuncture with Dr. Clara Chang, one kinesiology session with uh, Catherine, and then one coaching session uh, with me. And in case you're not the, the winner, then no need to worry because that we also prepare something for everybody. So for everybody who are audience uh, today, that you will get uh, 300 off for acupuncture or kinesiology uh, treatments with Clara and Catherine or you can get 500 off for our balance uh, sleep package or balance de-stress package. Uh, and also for me that since COVID, I've been offering every Wednesday afternoon, I'm offering flexible coaching rates, meaning that you can just pay at a rate which you are affordable to students or anybody who have um, financial challenges but need support on things like sleep, stress, life purpose, um, personal development, leadership, yeah, um, and for now, it's the time for us to announce the winner. Um, Want to go first? Yeah. So like um, the, for Chinese medicines, um, the one who got it is Thomas Ng, um, whose telephone number starts with 9363. Three. Yeah, so I know that, uh, I thought that you know who you are, and then I will contact you and yeah. making sure you, that. You have our uh, email on this mm. slide so that you can just contact us. Uh, to arrange. And yeah. Catherine? So the lucky winner in kinesiology is Khaled Ma. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. And the uh, email starts with 102 663. Mm -hmm. Well done. <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations. And the lucky person for the coaching session is Yan Han uh, with the telephone beginning with 6814. So congratulations. We're looking forward to see you uh, at our clinic in, in Central. Uh, and uh, again, if you would like to get our uh, slides, then you can just leave your uh, email uh, in the chat. So we will get it all and send over the, the slides. And thank you all um, for the time and to being here uh, with us. We really enjoy the time and to, to share uh, this um, insight around sleep. So we wish you all good sleep, um, begin to practice some of the things we shared today and become uh, more resilient and have better sleep and better health. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Congratulations to all the winners. And I hope that uh, you will enjoy the session and benefit from all the great sharing from our panelists. Um, I think um, we all should practice some of the exercises that uh, our panelists have suggested. Um, they seem to be quite easy to do. So again, thank you, Clara, um, Judy, and also Catherine. Um, again, thank you all of you, you know, for joining us. Uh, we would love to hear from you the feedback about this workshop. So please complete a simple survey by scanning the QR code on the screen. If you have any, okay, so QR code coming, so please scan it. If you have any further queries and suggestions, 
do feel free to let us know by email at svmalum at ust.hk. I, I just wanted to also thank everybody. This will be the last uh, session webinar that we will have for the calendar year 2020. Uh, we really appreciate all your support. And in the coming new year, uh, we actually have planned a wonderful uh, and alumni new year virtual networking event. Uh, please mark your calendar alumni will be January 7th. Uh, 2021, which is a Thursday at 7 p.m. And you will be welcome, you know, uh, with a lot of great people, like alumni, and also uh, we will have a very attractive lucky draw for all of you to celebrate the new year. So thank you again for all of your support, and we wish you a lovely afternoon. Bye-bye. Thank you.